Hello and a very warm welcome to LMT Royal YouTube channel. This week, our Duke and Duchess were pictured after enjoying dinner with two friends. What Meghan wore? To mark World Mental Health Day, Meghan and Harry have joined the Teenager Therapy Podcast for a discussion about prioritizing mental health, removing the stigma around the issue, and how we can all contribute to a healthier world, physically, mentally, emotionally, and holistically. Apparently, the Sussexes learned about Teenager Therapy from a New York Times profile. Our Duke and Duchess were so impressed with the podcast show that they immediately knew they wanted to support their important work. The Teenager Therapy is a podcast that's a coming-off age story portrayed in real time. A culmination of mistakes and growth and a reminder you're not alone. The podcast describes itself as five stressed, sleep-deprived, yet energetic teens sit down and talk about the struggles that come with being a teenager. On Tuesday next week, Meghan is planning on making another appearance at Fortune Most Powerful Women Next Gen Summit. She'll be speaking with Emma Hinchliffe, associate editor at Fortune magazine. On September 29th, Meghan also joined Fortune's Most Powerful Women Summit when she spoke with Ellen McGirt, Fortune editor, about how society can work together to revamp the digital world and the current state of the digital landscape. We just want to annoy you for three seconds. That is, please click the subscribe button to get more attractive videos from us. Your support is also the motivation for our team to produce better videos with more quality content. And now we do not like you wait any longer. Let's start the story. What Meghan Markle was really like during her deal or no deal days. Meghan Markle's life has been anything but a straight line. Meghan first made a name for herself as an actress in the United States thanks to her work on the television drama Suits, where she played Rachel Zane for seven seasons. She then came to international fame in 2016 for her relationship with Prince Harry. By 2018, the two had tied the knot. They welcomed their son, Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, in 2019. The following year, the couple made headlines once again when they announced they would be stepping away from palace life and their duties as senior royals. All that being said, before Suits, before becoming a princess, and before Megxit, Meghan was a Northwestern University grad taking acting work where she could get it. Meghan landed bit parts on shows like General Hospital and CSI, but one of her most famous roles was appearing as a briefcase girl on the game show Deal or No Deal. While the show might be one of Meghan's more well-known gigs, the Duchess of Sussex doesn't necessarily look back on her time holding briefcases particularly fondly. Deal or No Deal helped Meghan Markle make ends meet. Before landing a main role on Suits, Meghan Markle was taking whatever role she could as a struggling actress. When asked about her time on Deal or No Deal, Meghan was incredibly frank in her answer to Esquire. She said, I would put that in the category of things I was doing while I was auditioning to try to make ends meet. Meghan called the show a learning experience, explaining that it helped her to understand what she would rather be doing. It's not difficult to see why Deal or No Deal was far from Meghan's favorite gig. The actress recalled, I would end up standing up there forever in these terribly uncomfortable and inexpensive five-inch heels just waiting for someone to pick my number so I could go and sit down. Of course, this interview came well before Meghan had even met Prince Harry, so she could afford to be a bit blunter than she's allowed to be now. While Howie Mandel may not have remembered Meghan on the show, one famous fellow briefcase girl did, Chrissy Teigen. Teigen told Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen that while she doesn't remember too much about Meghan, she had nothing but nice things to say. Tygen said, everyone wants a good story, and I'm like, I remember, like, just very quiet and sweet. I got nothing. Really kind. And I don't say that about anyone. Another analysis. People think Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have poor negotiation tactics. It's a fact of life that being able to get what one wants often involves knowing how to negotiate. However, onlookers believe Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex do not know how to play their cards right. In the past few years, the couple has been trying to achieve their goals, but, according to many people, they often go about it the wrong way because of poor negotiation tactics. Things have not gone Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's way these past few years. After Harry and Meghan tied the knot in 2018, the pair went through several public struggles. Most notably, they received a lot of negative press and dealt with numerous accusations about their characters. This even led them to sue a few newspapers in the fall of 2019. 
Additionally, according to the biography Finding Freedom by Amit Scabi and Carolyn Durand, both Harry and Meghan had difficulties in the royal family, where they were often not as favored as Prince William and Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge. In early 2020, Harry and Meghan announced their decision to step down from being senior royals. They subsequently moved to the U.S. and settled down in Southern California. Why people say Harry and Meghan are poor negotiators? According to a number of royal followers, Harry and Meghan's main tactic to getting what they want seems to be making huge decisions that could change their lives and those of other people involved. Thus, people have labeled them poor negotiators. One person said, it sounds like they are poor negotiators and simply outline demands rather than open dialogue. And when they don't get 100% of what they want, they don't adjust, they go for the nuclear option. They don't use the more moderate resources at their disposal. Just keep reaching for the sharpest, biggest weapon in their tool belt when that sort of response is often unnecessary. Another said, in actual negotiations, their attitude would be called lack of good faith. They did not intend to actually come to a solution acceptable to all parties, if that meant making concessions. When things didn't go the way they wanted, they disengaged and pushed nuclear buttons to coerce the other side. Harry and Meghan have also been called impatient. Meghan was a full-time royal for less than two years before she and Harry decided to distance themselves from the institution. Some onlookers have called the Sussexes impatient for throwing in the towel too soon. Other royal followers have also pointed out that Kate struggled when she first joined the royal family as well, especially with the press. However, time seems to what eventually improved her situation. Additionally, Kate's public attitude, which includes focusing on her work and not responding to rumors, allows many reports about her to not escalate further in the media. Another report. Why Meghan and Harry are being criticized for their latest video. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are encouraging people to vote in a new video, but not everyone is happy about it. A royal insider told the Times that the couple crossed a line with their speech, which was released on voter registration day by Time as part of Time 100, the publication's list of the 100 most influential people in the world. In the video, Meghan and Harry talked about the importance of voting. Meghan said, Every four years we are told the same thing, that this is the most important election of our lifetime. But this one is, when we vote, our values are put into action and our voices are heard. Your voice is a reminder that you matter, because you do and you deserve to be heard. While Prince Harry is not an American citizen and isn't eligible to vote, he also spoke about the importance of voting. He said, when the bad outweighs the good, for many, whether we realize it or not, it erodes our ability to have compassion and our ability to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. Because when one person buys into negativity online, the effects are felt exponentially. It's time to not only reflect, but act. Many people don't think that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle should be discussing politics. Prince Harry continued, as we approach this November, it's vital that we reject hate speech, misinformation and online negativity. Traditionally, the royal family does not weigh in on such matters and refrain from voting in elections. While they are technically allowed to vote, the official royal website notes that Queen Elizabeth has to remain strictly neutral with respect to political matters, a policy also followed by her family. This break from tradition has some people up in arms, even though the Duke and Duchess of Sussex now live in California and are not senior royals. Royal expert Joe Little said, you can understand Meghan getting involved as an American citizen, although she is now a member of the British royal family. But I think people will struggle a lot more with Prince Harry because as a prince of the blood it's not seen as the done thing to talk about politics, be it British or American. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus even more LMT royal videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Don't stop.